Hello everyone, my name is Joe, welcome to the channel, and in today's video we're going to be actually swapping the axles, and I'll show you in a second what I got. Uh, it's going to be a couple parts, it's not going to be one three hours video, so I'm going to be uh, starting with the front, then move to the rear, and then uh, bring you guys along, show you what I'm doing. First, let me show you guys what I got here. Alright, so finally we're getting rid of the open diff, the theory, and I was actually impressed with the stock setup, 35s, the good suspension, my Jeep was doing amazing, but now, finally, got this, you guys probably have seen this axle, that's the, uh, just the Dana 44 stock, pretty much everything stock in that one, that's out of the Rubicon. Pretty low mileage, just need the brakes. But that's the good stuff here. What we got here is the Dana 44 out of the Rubicon. And but it's pretty much fully built except this trust. So as you guys can see, got RCVs, RCV shafts, one piece, and got the uh, metal cloak, uh, FAD skid plate. Uh, Yeti steering, uh, tie rod, drag link, they're here. Uh, got the brakes back there. I got, you know, the guy gave me an extra the drive shaft. So pretty new. Uh, gave me a flip kit for the, uh, if I wanted to go that route for the uh, tie rod. Uh, I mean, sorry, my the drag link. And then here, you got... I don't know if you guys can see. I got the aftermarket Dana diff cover. This one got 488 gears. And that's pretty much it. So 488 gears. Uh, RCVs. Fox uh, stabilizer. Relocation bracket for it. So it's pretty well built uh, axle. I'll still have to uh, re-gear this one to 488 because it's still at 410 gears and uh, I don't do gears so somebody's gonna be coming uh, either do it here in my house or I'm gonna take it to offer customs my buddy's shop get it done there we'll see what we do but for now let's pull the Jeep in back it up start uh, pulling stuff apart uh, I'm, th I'm gonna take it easy Probably you guys know, uh, I've been posting a lot of videos lately, and the reason is uh, I just recently had another baby, so I have my year and eight month daughter, now I have a little boy, so things are crazy here at home. That's why I haven't been uh, posting a lot of videos lately, and with this axle, I'm going to be taking it slow, so let's get into it guys. All right, now uh, what I'm doing is just taking the lug nuts out when the Jeep is on the ground. Had a little issue. It's fun to start your project. A little issue. Here, you guys can see this. That's the seven spline uh, lug nut key. So look at it. It just opened up, split, two spots. And there was one nut on this tire that I couldn't get off. I had to bring my uh, uh, breaker bar, even uh, power tools, uh, wasn't able to. And then I went ahead and uh, bought another one, another socket. I uh, went to like three, four different places to find the seven spline. But I found it. I got both lug nuts out from both tires. So what I'm going to do right now, lift the Jeep up. Uh, normally go by the frame. And then uh, put the uh, jack stands to drop the suspension. And then I'll uh, put some jack stands under the axle. So that's how this video is going to be. I was going to explain uh, what I'm doing. I will film when I can. It's going to be hard because it's only me by myself doing this whole thing. Cool. So raise the Jeep up. Put uh, jack stands under the frame. 
Then uh, lift the axle up a little bit and put jack stands under the axle. So I'm securing the frame, I'm securing the axle, and then I'll start unbolting stuff and uh, I'll drop the, the uh, axle down. Let's do that. All right, so here we got the jack stands under the axles. I got the big jack stands under the frame, and then always put your tires under your Jeep just for safety just uh, in case something fails any of the jack stands fails and you're under there the jeep will land on that won't smash you down there now i'm just gonna start disassembling stuff and drop this all right so first thing i took off was the track bar I got the rock roller track bar and then uh, just a good idea good thing to do is always put the uh, the bolt and not and not back uh, in place so you don't lose them or you don't mix them so that way you know where they came from because after this whole thing is is out you're gonna have a lot of bolts and nuts and washers and bunch of stuff so just to keep track I just put it back in the track bar I only have to take this part because I'm not changing the track bar I'm putting a new axle I don't have to take it from the other side only this side now, uh, probably gonna go to, if you have sway bars, mine is already disconnected. That would be a good idea to disconnect them as well. And then I'm gonna disconnect the control arms only from this side. Take all the uh, plugs out from the FAD, from the diff. And then I'm gonna move to the calipers. Take the calipers off, hang them somewhere. And then I'll take the rotor off and uh, the shield to get to the, uh, to the sensor. So I can pull this one off too. And yeah, let's get back to work. All right, now I'm trying to take the uh, <clears throat> dragging out. I loosened up the nut and I just kept it on there just in case it drops. I just hammered it a bunch of times. It wasn't coming off. It's time to use the uh, pickle fork. And my helper is not helping. Hey, you wanna help me? No? Alright. After hammering for probably 20, 30 minutes on that sucker, you got the pickle fork on it and everything, and I wasn't able to get it out. Little hammer wasn't doing it. And then uh, I grabbed the big one, just hammered it pretty good, and then fell off. Just make sure you always keep the nut on top. So it doesn't fall on your feet. But this one is out. All right. So next, I took the the shock out and all these little clips that connects the uh, the sensor and the uh, brake cable. And I removed the caliper. Uh, don't worry. There's it's pretty loose. That's why I have it on the ground. There's no tension on it. Normally, if you lift your Jeep too high, you hang it somewhere up here, keep it safe. So the way you take it out, there you have these two bolts, one here, and this one that goes in there. Take them out. So next one I'm gonna do, because I need to get down there to this sensor to remove it, I'll have to remove the, uh, <coughs> the rotor and Allen key, I believe. Just remove that. This will come out, and then for the shield, there's three little bolts. Uh, one, like two, and three at the bottom. Take them out, and then you get access to the to the sensor. And then you remove that. Same thing on the, both sides. Now here, I'm trying to get the rotor out. This is not coming out. It's on there good, and as you guys can see, it got stripped. So tried the uh, bigger size and everything it's not working it's on there good and just barely spun it and just strip them so uh, I'm just gonna have to drill it out all right guys and uh, that's actually the second day so uh, I just undid all these uh, uh, that ABS sensor uh, cable kind of clips into this little metal bar took them all out and 
took the caliper caliper is out now running in the same issue here i don't know if you guys can see this here but these uh the actually i was talking to my buddy john he said you got some special tools for the where it just uh it's like a it's like a power tool or something it just like barely spins it like very little tiny bit and then crack it and i mean crack it loose because now it's on there good and these threads uh not threads the head right here it's pretty soft right when i put in my uh uh just the wrench in there and try to spin it it just you know stripped the head right away so uh, luckily on the other axle i have two of these little bolts so i'm just gonna drill it out drill it out just like i did on the other side and uh, so i can take this little uh, caliper off a little helper what are you doing <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna drill it. Be able to get to the sensor. And here it goes. Let's see if it's hot. Nope, it's not. Just drilled it out. And I got to put a screwdriver in there after I, I drilled it. it. Came right out. Now, just got the caliper out. And a new way to do it. Uh, got the rubber mallet, tap it a few times, and this will come right up. Alright, next thing I did here, I removed the upper control arm and the bottom one. Still in there, but uh, I took the bolt out. Oh, hammer it, there it is. Yeah. Uh, and if uh, the control arms are binding, just loosen up that side. That will be easier. Here, it's not too bad. I can still uh, slide the axle forward. It comes out. Uh, I'm just going to do the other side. And then, uh, pretty much the only thing left will be the drive shaft that is holding uh, this whole thing up. Upper control arm, long control arm on the other side, and drive shaft. All the, uh, I removed the uh, FAD. Uh, cable and that's pretty much it there's the breather hose there too that goes into the diff I took that one out uh, all these little clamps that goes into uh, your axle to hold that FAD I removed those as well now this whole thing should come out in a bit all right so now I got everything disassembled both sides and so the axle is sitting on the jack stands and the only thing holding it from top is the drive shaft. So what I did right here is I got the floor jack and lift up the by the pinion up a little bit. Because when you disassemble this, there's most of the axle weight is on this side because you know your pinion. So this will drop and you don't want that. So just uh, secure it with the floor jack lift it up just a little bit to get some pressure off and just take all these four bolts right there one two and then two on the other side and then we'll be able to drop the whole thing and there you have it this front axle is out that was not easy one man one man person one man job one person job that's like two or three Especially with no lift. Woo! So, uh, the only challenge was to get the axle down on this floor dolly. And uh, the issue I was having is because, you know, the axle will rotate. It depends which way you're lifting it. So, that was kind of a challenge to drop it. So, what I was doing, I was just doing one side at a time slowly. And then I put two jack stands, one on this side, one on the back side of the axle, to kind of keep it stable. And I dropped this one on this. And so, as you guys saw, the axle is out. What I'm about to, what I'm about to do right now is install these metal cloak upper bump stops. Uh, since I have the whole thing out, it, this, as you guys can see, it's pretty bad. And just these, just spin them, 
back and forth and then they pull down and then the other one goes right back up there I'm gonna go ahead and do that it's pretty simple and then bring this axle under start bolting everything up all right guys so we got the front axle move the other one out of the way a little bit and uh what i've already done right here i moved my uh metal cloak uh shock bracket uh from my old axle to the new axle the only thing i still have to get from there is the bump stops both bump stops and this one uh should be ready to go in all right so now i slid the uh, the new axle under the jeep and what i'm going to try to do uh hopefully do one side at a time i hope that the axle doesn't rotate on me much uh the plan is to lift it up from one side and hook up the lower control arms down here i'll probably start on the other side because most of the weight is on this side uh, and the dolly is shifted this way that's why the dolly is more this way because the axle is off center so probably do that uh, lift the other side get the control arm in and then come back here lift this side again and I have another floor little floor jack uh, back there so uh, to kind of keep it under the uh, drive shaft and the pinion all right let me start all right show you guys what I've done so far so I started with the other side if you guys can see I put a strap from that point back and I only got uh, the bolt on the lower control arm but I couldn't get it all the way through because the axle a little bit off center so uh, I got that that's you know that side secure now what I'm gonna do here what I did actually is I put up my I put up the spring but at the new upper bump stops and uh, to take the old one out what helped me I was trying to kind of you know turn it twist it and spin it and try to pull it and uh, I wasn't really coming out so I put a screwdriver up in there and then I just pry it down and came right out putting this one up was super easy so I got the uh, bump stop it's not tied uh, drive shaft uh, is already on there and tight so now I'm gonna what I'm gonna do here uh, I took the whole uh, lower control arm out. Uh, I'm going to install the bottom and then uh, lift this side up a little bit so I can get the other uh, the other uh, screw all the way through and then bolt up the upper side, the upper the bottom control arm on the this here. And uh, after that, I'll probably start with the upper control arms after I got the spring on that side so all right so on this side I connected the upper the upper control arm lower control arm I ran the uh, ABS sensor back in and about about to put in the Yeti uh, tie rod drag link now uh, just because uh, I don't have the calipers in a way it makes it a little easier to work on this side so that's what I'm doing right now. Put the, these on and then uh, finish up the control arms on the other side. Uh, first, I forgot to put uh, the, the new upper bumps in, so I had to drop everything back down and then put it back up there. And uh, that's about it now. So just getting tie rod drag link, control arms on the other side. And yeah. Step by step, should be done with the front today. All right, little update on what I'm doing right here. So uh, I just got the uh, tie rod in. Uh, this one is the Yeti, as you guys can see. So it comes with this bracket for the uh, uh, stabilizer relocation. And I need to drill a hole for it right here. Uh, the previous owner uh, had a uh, thing he had synergy but 
the axle that he bought at this Yeti so he gave me this setup because he already got synergy on so this wasn't drilled out so what I did right here I just put the uh, track bar bolt in tied it make sure it's nice and flat and I'm just gonna put a center punch right here and then drill this hole to be able to get this screw in here to secure this bracket so that's what I'm doing right now I want to do this and then I'll do the uh, drag link next all right and now you got the hole drilled and then uh, just use some uh, spray paint just to prevent it from rusting and uh, yeah now I'm just gonna secure it with this one and then I'll remove this bolt and then I'll get the track bar in later but I just want to secure the bracket with this one and here a little tip for you guys uh, when you're installing the drag link especially if you're doing this job by yourself it's hard to get in a pitman arm right here especially this stuff is beefy it's, it's heavy and with that one all the way down on the ground so all you need to do you have a little bungee cord and then tie this one up somewhere right here to your uh, sway bar and that way we'll keep that and lift it up high so it's easier for you to lift and install it on the other side there you go guys quick tip all right guys so uh, something that I didn't know about that the uh, Rubicon um, I knew they come with bigger brakes but I thought mine will still work so that's the Rubicon rotor that's the sports rotor the Rubicon rotor will not fit in here with the calipers it's too wide so I had to use my uh, brakes it's just just barely like two millimeters or, or one millimeter like thicker so it didn't go in there so I had to use my old brakes so the caliper will fit over this because the Rubicon ones not work unless you want to change your calipers yeah so that's what I'm doing right now and I just torque everything down uh, the tie rod dangling those are torqued down so I'll finish up control arms I've been just working on the brakes right now assembling everything all right I'll bring you guys for a update all right let me give you guys an update on what is going on so far everything is bolted up uh, except the track bar that still needs uh, to be bolted and uh, the sway bar uh, with the metal cloak they got a little bracket I have to install that and I need to tie the control arms everything here the brakes calipers all the the lines are all good so uh, yeah I got pretty much I'm almost done and then when I put everything back together drop it on the ground tie uh, the control arms so there is a little tip for you guys uh, when you're doing your control arms is uh, if you're trying to find the bushing to go in and to line with the hole uh, just put the floor jack under the axle or under the uh, tie rod and lift it and then you know lift it from one side from the front from the back just see where how you're gonna align your hole so instead of fighting it you can put ratchet strap or you can use your jack and then lift the axle and that will align them that makes it way easier than trying to fight it by hand and here I got my daughter she's playing with my tools and I got the oil because this axle doesn't have oil in it so I got the uh, the royal purple synthetic oil and this is the 75w90 this is a really good stuff uh, that's what you want for your gears all right so let me uh, hey why are you doing this so let me uh, get the bracket for the sway bars I don't really uh, connect my sway bars anyways but hey and then uh, I'm waiting on the axle harness 
for the uh, I mean the locker harness uh, when I should get that in a couple days I have a few switches I'm just gonna run it in there till I get the till I get like a pod uh, a pod or some kind of uh, here, honest, take it. or some kind of uh, panel yeah so I'll bring you guys for another update all right, so I'm gonna show you guys one thing I did here. If you guys ever end up running in the same issue, so if you guys can see here, I have the metal cloak bracket that goes right in there, just like so. The opening right here between these two was too tight for this. Sometimes if you over tie your sway bars, that's what happened. You you know you you push the the uh, bracket in. So what I did, I just got big wrench, put it on there, and just open it up a little bit and now this is going right in there just hammer it a few times align the holes be good to go just uh, in case you guys run into an issue like that you know what to do all right Jeep is on the ground finally what I'm trying to do right now is uh, adjust the track bar and the way I do it as you guys can see, I have a strap right here on the axle and a strap all the way up there on the frame. Hook it up here. So I'll take the, the way I take the measurements, I just go from the spring tower from up there to a certain point on the, on the tire. You can put a piece of wood right here, measure to it, or you can measure somewhere on the tire. The way I did it, you see that? A red line so I measured and I actually had to shift the body that way a little bit so I did that with this with the ratchet strap now it's on the dot for both this side and the other side but if you look over here uh, the track bar is moved that way a little bit so what I have to do, I have to adjust the track bar a little bit so it aligns with this hole. And then uh, I'll tie it, put it down, bolt it up, and tie it again. And I'll do it. And then I'll check the uh, toe in and toe out. Alright guys, it's all done. Alignment is good, everything is good. Everything is tight. Finally, I am tired. My hands are sore as hell. <laughs>